This is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Our text is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, the, um, in this service, the gospel is, is followed by a hymn and then the sermon. So I put the gospel reading as a separate file. Let's begin with a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Monday this week, I started working on my sermon, as I usually do, and as I quite often do, got together with a local pastor so we can share some perspectives on the lesson. Got there a little early so that I could look over the lessons ahead of time, and my first reaction was, Something's missing. Now, I'm a suburban kid. I don't know a whole lot about farming or gardening. But as soon as I read the parable of the seed growing secretly, verses 26 to 29 in our lesson, I knew that something was missing. The kingdom of God is as if someone should scatter seed and sleep and rise, and the earth produces of itself a full crop. So wait a minute, I thought, with my very, very limited gardening knowledge, even in Jesus' time, anyone who wanted a crop did not just throw out seed and then just lay back waiting for the harvest. There was no irrigation then, or it was very limited. There were certainly no bags of fertilizer. You pretty much waited for the rains and you hoped or the best. But it wasn't all rest and taking it easy. There was weeding. Constant weeding. Anybody who's ever had a guard knows about all the weeding. And to the extent that they could, the farmers would drive off birds and insects. They would erect and they would fix the scarecrows. Farming is not easy. It's hard work. Anybody who's ever had a backyard garden knows that, let alone anybody who's had an actual farm. And Jesus' listeners would have known all this. They knew far more about farming than anybody here. So what is Jesus trying to tell us? Not about farming, but about the kingdom of God. And what is this kingdom of God? And why there? Parables are wonderful teaching tools because parables have so many levels. They're like an onion, you know, you peel off a layer and then there's another layer and then you peel that layer off and there's another layer. And we could probably go on digging through these parables for the rest of the day. Parables are wonderful teaching tools. And then the kingdom of God, which means so many different things. The kingdom of God arises when individuals come to faith, whether it's as babies or children or as adults. The kingdom of God is the church, which preaches the kingdom and provides for baptism and holy communion. The kingdom of God is the communion of saints from every time and every place, the full breath of the kingdom of God. So what is Jesus saying? That we just scatter seed? You know, say a good word to someone here, drop off your kid at Sunday school there, and we don't have to do anything at all and the kingdom will grow. I don't think that's what Jesus is saying at all. I think Jesus expects us to work in the garden and water and fertilize. But we need to have a sense of wonder when people come to faith. And we know that God brings people faith. Unfortunately, there isn't a foolproof five-step plan or a 10-step plan or a 15-step plan that brings in the kingdom of God. There's work and there's prayer, and there's planning. 
but then we have to trust in God. One brief story. I had a soldier in basic training. The full moon was coming up, and he wanted to worship the moon. Now, you don't run into many moon worshipers, but he was one. It was my job as an army chaplain to ensure that everybody can worship as they desire. That's their constitutional right. So it's a long story, but let me summarize it by saying that I met with the soldiers several times and the leadership several times, and I took them out to worship the moon because the basic training can't go out alone. So I came into work the next day, and I really thought very little about all this. So about three days later, this basic training chaplain, training soldier, comes to me in tears. And he tells me that he realized that he didn't really want to worship the moon. What he really wanted was to upset his parents with his moon worship, and he had been doing this since high school. He wanted to shock the other soldiers. He wanted to be a rebel. He enjoyed being a rebel. And he went on to thank me for listening to him, for not condemning him for worshiping the moon. Bottom line was, he was ashamed. His parents had raised him right. They had taken him to Sunday school and church. He knew Jesus Christ. But he was a rebellious teenager, and this was his way to rebel. Now, I did very little. I didn't plant a seed. His parents and his church family had done that. I hadn't added any fertilizer. Maybe I had watered just a little bit. But I was around when all that hard work, when all that seed planting and all the watering and all the fertilizing brought that seed up out of the ground. When the kingdom of God burst forth in that soldier. The parable of the seed growing secretly is not a call to be lazy. It is a call to see the wonder of all that God does to bring the kingdom of God to fruit. Christian church went from just a few disciples after Jesus' resurrection to the, minor, to the majority religion of the Roman Empire. It spread around the world. It's now growing like wildfire in Africa and parts of Asia. <coughs> Want to see the kingdom of God in process? Go to a vacation Bible school. Or watch the three-year-olds at a children's sermon. Lots of work. Lots of seed planting. Lots of watering and fertilizing going on. So what's the message? Certainly not for the church to be lazy but to trust God that the kingdom of God takes root in ways we can't explain, in ways we don't expect, in children and adults, because God gives the growth, and not us. The parable of the mustard seed. Everybody has... A mustard seed. So let me be just a little shorter on that parable. But let me give you one idea that you can take away. And why is Jesus talking about mustard plants, mustard shrubs? These are not the tallest things around. The honor of being the tallest probably goes to the cedars. Mustard bushes... Yeah, you have the picture. Probably grow at most to about 20 feet. Average is probably more like 6 feet. Cedar trees can go through 120 or 180 feet. So Jesus is not talking about the heights of the trees, but about how the seeds grow. So pick up the bag of mustard seeds that I gave you. It's just a visual aid. 
But the most important thing is when you go home, don't go out and plant the seeds. Why? Well, I don't think we're really all that familiar with mustard. Now, when I think of mustard, I think about a plastic bottle, you know, squeeze something on hot dogs. And when I read about mustard plants in the Bible, I think mustard plants must have been beautiful and sweet and highly desired. They are, in fact, very pretty. They're a very pretty yellow flower. Well, they're not beautiful and sweet and highly desired. Now, some farmers might grow these plants so that they can get the spice out of it. But for many farmers, they're a weed. The mustard seed will result in mustard plants just growing everywhere. And if they're planted mistakenly, mustard plants take up space that could be used to raise wheat, or barley, or grapes, or figs. The mustard plant will grow anywhere when and where you least expect it. And isn't that what we want of the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God spreads even when the emperors of Rome try to stop it. The kingdom of God proclaims that there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. Now, the church hasn't perfectly proclaimed that, far from perfectly over the years. But the message gets out that in the kingdom of God, all are equal. I was just listening to a podcast about how neo-Nazis are turning away from Christianity because all this love and equality stuff is preventing the recruitment of more Nazis. Isn't that what we want from the kingdom of God? To be impediment to the recruitment of more Nazis? The kingdom of God spreads when kids tell their parents, you may not want to go to church, but I do. It's the reverse of what we expect, but sometimes kids tell their parents they want to go to church. The kingdom of God occurs when Christians reach out to feed the poor and the hungry even if there are some people who would really like the church to stop giving out food because maybe that will encourage the poor and the hungry to move on. There's so many other examples. The kingdom of God is surprising. The kingdom of God is all around us. The kingdom of God is not under our control but is under God's control. These parables tell us to sow the seeds of the kingdom, to water and to fertilize, but to expect to be amazed by the growth of the kingdom. A kingdom that sometimes grows wild like a weed in unexpected places, crowding out fear and distrust and hate. So be encouraged by these parables. Pray for the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.